Yo, call me Sonic Prime the way I left the trailer slime. Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome back to the Game Skates. Today, and only today, we are here to talk about, that's right, Sonic Prime Season 2. It is finally here. They dropped all the episodes I went to, what, it's been six to seven months since the last batch, and I'm here to give my thoughts and everything about this. And of course, subscribe to your boy, let me know what you thought of this series, and tune in for way more videos. Now, Sonic Prime Season 2. Now, I'm gonna get into different, you know, factors about this show, you know, like, sort of divided-wise, but I'll just... Quickly, my overall thoughts here before I get into it. Man, what a step up from season one. I genuinely loved this so much. I remember with season one thinking, this is really fun. I had a good time with this, you know, cool story characters, cool stuff. And that was really it. I thought it was fun, you know, and that was it. But with season two, I just felt like that action, you know, it felt like things felt bigger, better. It felt like we were getting right into things. And it just, I was so impressed with everything revolving around the season. And I'm, I just, I need to gush about it right now let's start with talking about the story right so this time around with sonic prime we start off the story you know with sonic and shadow you know meeting up and shadow explained to sonic like hey you fucked everything up right because of what you did right and the prisms are what they need to build you know their whole empires and new worlds and get their power right there's one of these in the green hill zones that's messed up and we need to go get the rest uh because again you fucked everything up right so the plot just is centered around sonic having to go back to those worlds yeah, the plot is pretty straightforward, actually. I, I, and I, I actually prefer that because I remember season one, it was all about, all right, well, Sonic goes to a world, you meet the characters, you deal with the challenge of those characters, and then you go to the next world. Whereas in this one, actually, I found it really cool that instead of just adding, because that was my biggest fear. My biggest fear originally was that season two is going to be, all right, Sonic is going to go to another world and another new world and another new world and keep meeting new variants. But instead, this time around, what they did was, hey, let's Let's go back to those worlds now that Sonic knows them, right? And try to deal with the challenge of the Egg Council trying to get, you know, the Shatter Crystal. Sonic, you know, has to be basically beat the clock. You know, he's got to go there first. He's got to get right into it. And what I love about that is, yeah, they get right into it you know what i mean he goes to the jungle world in the beginning uh with the unga bunga gang and he goes right in and it's straight up to the action right where they're trying to save the shadow versus crystal they're explaining it and honestly like i said i like the action in those first in the first episode there but I would say the Unga Bunga Forest group are definitely the weakest of the cast for sure. They feel the most disconnected and they feel like the ones that are least memorable. And it's, you know, obviously it's the nature of the world because they're more primal, I guess, versions of the character. But I would say that world to this day is the weakest. But quickly, the good thing is they sort of get that done right away, right? Because then Sonic goes into the pirate world, which is fun because of Dread. And obviously I want to get into the characters and all this stuff. But yeah, he goes into the pirate world. They do the whole spiel you know they fight do some action all that stuff so the story really is around you know them going to get the shattered crystals you get a lot more of the egg council you know which i, I want to talk about a little later in but they're not necessarily my favorites but yeah story wise i enjoyed it i thought it was a great story i thought the way they wrapped up the season is a very good cliffhanger obviously with nine becoming the new antagonist of the series because of sonic you know because of how sonic continues to treat nine like he's not real like he's just a variant of Tails and you see Nine solely like realizing this as Sonic talks to him he's like why is he talking to me like I am, you know, someone else, you know, like he's not talking to me the way I should be talked to. And so I understand 100% where Nine is coming from. And basically how Sonic like has no regard or care for what might happen to him if the worlds get together. And that's a big part of this season, right, is how, you know, Sonic's actions, you know, have consequences. And obviously, you know, a star of the show here is Shadow highlighting that, you know, and telling him like, hey, man, like who you think are your friends are not your exact friends. They are different people and just overall man just story wise for season two i was really happy with it they they did a good job of keeping some plot to elements i really like you know when dread betrays him and you know gets the crew against him i love again the stuff in new york city i love chaos sonic i want to get into chaos sonic a little later in the video but story wise i think they did such an awesome job let's talk about quickly animation because this season felt so much better animation wise you know what i mean like i was so happy now obviously i loved that season one one look but there was a lot of moments in 
season one where I felt like you guys look like toys almost. You know, not necessarily toys, but like very plasticky, right? So to have a season where, you know, they've honed in a little more and things, I don't know, again, it could just be just because it's been a long time, but things just feel more bouncier. You know, the characters, even like Sonic, like he's making more like bouncy movements and animations as he's saying things, right? Even like there's so much more squash and stretch going on. There's a lot of references of the animation. He does the Sonic Adventure pose. They do a reference to the Unleash opening. Apparently, Marza had something to do with this season. I'm not sure to what level, whether they supervised it or helped produce it, but Marza Studio was involved. But yeah, no, I was so much happy with a lot of, you know, there's a lot of shots basically that you can pick up here. And I just, I felt like everything felt quicker and the choreography of some of the fights were fucking awesome. I mean, especially the ones where it was Chaos Sonic versus Sonic, whether it was, you know, in the pirate world, how they bounced with the characters back and forth because the characters start to interact a lot more within the worlds. Like, I just thought animation-wise, 100% a step up from season one. And it's like, here it felt a lot better you know it, it's starting to feel more and more like this is just like a very high budget cg thing and i don't know again that's just the goggles or just the stakes being higher making the animation look better but i was just impressed with the animation overall this season now next up before we get into all the characters i want to talk about something that you know is is a big question about the show which is sonic's characterization you know how sonic is portrayed how sonic acts and everything because a big discussion was that if this is canon sonic you know or whatever it is why is he acting this way he's much more childlike and i think season one right leaned a lot more into the kid friendly jokes you know there was a lot of jokes where it's very much just like all right this is something a kid would laugh about or the dialogue was so much sillier or he was more ditzy you know whereas i felt like in this season while he is still definitely silly i feel like he was definitely more he's becoming more like the sonic we know and i don't know if like he was already supposed to be or if he's a younger interpretation it's hard to tell but the way i see it with this show is this just feels like younger sonic you know where he is almost like he is a teenager almost learning how to be himself because he has his cocky moments you know he has them with shadow he's just like i think you need me man you know or just in general like when he's talking to the other characters like trying to help them but also making his snarky remarks but he's not full snark yet he just has moments where he makes silly comments but he's definitely more silly right but he still feels cool, you know? And to be fair, I don't know what Sonic's full identity is nowadays. You know, obviously, a lot of people think Sonic's best portrayal is when he's shown in style, kind of like in Black Knight, Sonic X era. But a lot of people, you know, love modern Sonic, like in Frontiers, you know, where he's a little more, you know, serious, but he's got his funny smirky moments but here he's definitely just a silly guy right but he's cool you know and for me as long as sonic is cool he cares about the people around him it's awesome and obviously this sonic is flawed you know and that's that's a big point of this season to show how flawed sonic is you know when he thinks he's trying to help others right he really isn't thinking of the big picture and that always comes with a back and forth i feel like i do with that a lot you know and that's why i just i love the character it's like he thinks in the now right okay i'm gonna stop this this is gonna be okay you know he doesn't think about the future which is why he gets into an argument with nine and a lot of the cast you know because he doesn't think about what's gonna happen to them right he even has a moment in new york where he means good but he's not saying the right things and that's why at the end when the big plot twist is that nine you know it's just like fuck you buddy i think you might you know ruin my life or kill me when these shadow crystals go back to normal i don't know if i'm gonna exist but also you're treating me like i'm your friend which i'm not you know and and i love that you know and i love that it gets sonic sad i love that it gets him thinking next up though i want to talk about the side characters right because i feel like they shined so much more this season we obviously got to start talking about shadow of the hedgehog having a much bigger role this time around but not as big as i thought so obviously with episode one you get shadow versus sonic you get him explaining everything about the shadowverse and that is has been one of my favorite episodes to go back to that fight is awesome this interpretation of shadow is incredible and made me remember why i love shadow the hedgehog you know it's just it's that smart attitude but he's not an asshole you know he's just kind of a dickhead you know and how he talks about things but he's right you know it's funny how in episode one so you know he tells Sonic like you can't just trust nine right and he, and he ends up being right but i just love that sort of style where you know shadow is willing to you know 
do things on his own. Like he wants to save the day, but he wants to do it on his own. And just, I loved whenever he was on camera. One flaw again with the season, just he was stuck in the space area for a long time. And I wish he did more, but there's a funny scene where like he just kind of pushes Sonic to another world where he helps out when the Egg Council is in space. But when he shows up again at the end during the last episodes, he is incredible. He steals the show. I feel like Shadow is a show stealer anytime he's there this season. You know, anytime I saw him, I was like, Shadow! You know, and then the way he interacted with Sonic, the choreography between him and Sonic, you know, the dialogue, even that moment where he's just like, I'm gonna regret saving you. And then Sonic's like, I love you too, Shadow. It's just like, they, they have such a cute relationship, you know, in, the, in their friendship. Hey, don't be weird, don't. Oh, I know, I know you, I know y'all are out there. They are like an adorable team up, you know, very much good cop and bad cop because Shadow is not a bad person, but he does a great job, you know, at being himself and being snarky and even smiling this time around. I just, I love Shadow the Hedgehog so much. Now, we also got to talk about, you know, the other characters, right? We got characters like Dread, we got Thorn was in a bunch. Now, obviously, I don't want to go into the history of all of them, but I do want to give some highlights. So, Dread, which is Pirate Knuckles, definitely a standout character here again in season one. He was my favorite. And he stands out here again. He just cares about the treasure. He betrays Sonic. He goes to New York City and follows them. And then even though he helps Sonic at some point towards the end, he's kind of just like, hey, man, I really just want my treasure. So I, I can respect the character that is openly an asshole, you know, and manipulative like that in a show. Because I'm just like, you know what? You do you, buddy. One of my favorite other dynamics in the show was Rusty Rose, who's the robot Amy. They become friends in the pirate world and start working together. And I love that. And I love that they have character moments together realizing like, yeah, we've just kind of been working under people and this kind of sucks you know so let's just work together and be our own friends i love that a big character here we got to talk about is chaos sonic and to my surprise everyone's surprised he talked like he had dialogue i thought it was just gonna be a metal sonic variant but this is chaos sonic made by the egg council and Oh my god, this character for me was a show stealer. I know this character type is always going to be one that people love or hate, where they're very like eccentric, over the top, but I loved him so much. The way that he was basically just acting like Sonic, but if he was evil, was amazing. Like, he was snarky like him, he was annoying, he was talking so much, and even Sonic to the point being like, is this how I talk and act? Oh my god, I need to shut up. Like, but it, the way Chaos Sonic was interacting with Sonic, the fights he had with him, everything. I loved Chaos Sonic. I want him to appear in the games, but I don't know if he will. Again, it's a weird middle ground of like, it's it's kind of Metal Sonic, but it's it's not, you know, but I loved it. I thought the way he portrayed sort of a 90s slapstick Sonic style from back in the day was really cool. And I just, when he died, I legitimately yelled no. Like when I was live reacting on stream, I was like, no, like I was, you could see how sad I was to see him go because he's so cool. And I, I think he's going to come back because they do collect his robot parts. But just uh, what a standout character Chaos Sonic was. I really thought he was going to be more prominent, but man, that episode for me was incredible. I do adore Knuckles and Rouge from the Resistance world, like the, the New York City. I think they're really cool. They don't do too much, but they like help out Sonic and they're just like very, they're just fun to watch interact. And now other characters we got to talk about, the Egg Council, right? The Egg Council this season, definitely more prominent because season one was a lot more about, you know, the cast in the different worlds. But this time we focus a lot more on the Egg Council and man... I'm not a fan of these guys. I'm not going to lie to you, bro. Like, I know some people are trying to say they're, like, the different personalities of Eggman. I just feel like splitting Eggman's personalities almost makes him worse because, like, it's just, you get just annoying interpretations of him. So I will say, like, my one disappointment this season and in general is just the Egg Council. Egg Council, for me, definitely, like, a not a highlight, you know, just sort of, sort of just, like, okay, villains that are there, but we get a glimpse at regular Eggman. We still haven't seen him, obviously, because the world is fucked, but we get a glimpse of like this giant crazy looking Eggman with a purple aura around him that's charged with prism energy and uh, that was really cool speaking of things that are really cool we have to talk about that moment right the Sonic Prime transformation moment because in the last episode this is one of my favorite Sonic things ever we actually get two Sonic like forms so when Sonic is near the shatter crystal uh, he's able to be powered up by a few of them you know nine sends that energy over from the prism to Sonic and he gets a new form and I don't know what to call this I called it like ADHD Sonic because he sort of does this thing where he's got like he can almost split his personality by going so fast and I think it's it's so I would almost consider it like Naruto's you know 
clone jutsu but to a smaller scale but he's doing you know phantom rush moves from sonic from tears he's going around but I, what i love is he keeps like a sonic attitude right like he'll be talking and then he'll split his personality because he's going so fast and he'll be talking to his other self and i i thought that was such a cool form that you know gave him more action emphasis and made him faster but also kept sonic at his core but then we're surprised with when another crystal gets into sonic and he gets another form which we are sort of dubbing prime sonic he's got this purple aura around him the purple eyes right away i was like this is fidel sonic bro that's my guy so that was such a cool form very ultra instinct in terms of its look and design you know just the way like he's very silent when he's in that form stoic and he just gets right into the hits all he does is really he just destroys that egg man he just goes rushing right into him and pushes him down so very much that transformation that lasts a few seconds but is going to i think have a long lasting appeal to the fans what a cool surprise not to tease not to show not to you know expect or anything i think they did a fantastic job with that and i just i'm i'm so happy we have a new sonic form you know it's been so long and we've been asking for that uh, like you know forever now so to get a prime sonic in there was fucking awesome i was so happy about it and of course yeah the ending which i sort of uh, touched on already uh with nine sort of you know being the villain essentially you know he's stolen the shatter crystals he goes back home he tells sonic like hey i don't need you you know he fucks everything up and he dips because of sonic's sort of selfishness and i really loved that scene you could tell sonic was hurt and felt bad because he kept talking to him like he was tails and i think that's a big part of the season is sonic should be realizing that these characters yeah they might be variants of his friends but they're not his friends you know and obviously he can become friends with them but he can't go in expecting them to be who they are originally are you know and, and i think that's a big challenge and i think that's why i really like this sonic because he's a sonic that's going through the motions of understanding life and people and everything and obviously this is a very weird situation but i don't know i thought they did an amazing job with that now we got to talk about the future right the future what's gonna go down it's very hard to tell but i think again i feel like obviously nine being the villain there's definitely gonna be some sort of conversation with that but i do think there's gonna be some sad conclusion where nine gets wiped sadly or he wipes himself you know in order to restore the original green hill but i don't think the other worlds are gonna go away i don't know maybe they're gonna merge somehow or all be together either way there's gonna be something for sure that happens you know to nine i don't think he leaves this unscathed sadly i think that's gonna be one of the big emotional heartbeats and obviously i i hope this time around now that shadow is with sonic i think they're gonna work together a lot more i think we're gonna get a lot more of shadow in the next season i think this season they set him up you know showing more of his personality and style but now i think they're going to be working together primarily in a lot of fights and i think shadow deserves to kick his ass a little bit because he was right and he deserves it so i'm very excited to see what they do with that and i think they're going to defeat the egg council can't wait to see what they do with super Sonic. and i wonder if we're going to get like one more like world introduced i do think next season there is going to be some plot element where his original friends come into the story you know they restore green hill but maybe the eggmen aren't defeated so the original cast are going to help out and maybe we'll get another original character i 100 percent believe that chaos sonic is also going to come back but there's a lot of possibilities but yeah man overall like as you can tell from how i'm talking about and everything i really loved this season i was impressed with the animation i was impressed with how quickly they got into the action with every episode i was impressed with the dialogue between the characters i was laughing i was smiling i was happy and i just i felt like this season was so much more sonic and so much less i'm not trying to say not kid friendly but like i felt like season one was very much like like you know jokes that kids would laugh at but we're enjoying it whereas now it felt like okay we're getting to the rhythm of our characters things are getting more intense emotionally we're getting more shadow we're getting more hype forms like there's a lot more hype and energy in this season and just i was so happy with how it turned out guys i love sonic prime season 2 so much and i cannot wait to see how i think this is all going to wrap up so everybody let me know what you all thought of sonic prime season 2 in the comments below did you love it what did you think were your flaws with it what do you want to see next all right so guys thank y'all for watching you're the best i'll see you all next time peace out